There is a way to know when someone is sharing with you the divine and the holy truth. What is that? That is what we're going to be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Hello there. If you aren't already following the Newfound Faith channel, make sure that you subscribe today. Don't miss out on any of our wonderful content. Make sure that you also set your notifications so that you don't miss Sunday school lessons like this one. Our lesson today is titled Jesus Points to Daniel. We are going to be taking a look at selected scripture there from the 13th chapter of Mark's gospel, starting at the 14th verse. And we are going to work our way down through the 27th verse. We'll see there in the 14th verse of our lesson this week, that it opens up with Jesus saying to the disciples, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, highlight that in your Bibles, Jesus said, then let those who are in Judea, let them flee to the mountains. Let's again, pay close attention to that verse there, because in that verse, we see Jesus pointing to Daniel's prophecy, where again, he's speaking about the abomination of desolation. We saw, a desecration of the temple in, in a vision of Daniel in a lesson that we had a few weeks ago, where in that Sunday school lesson, Daniel, he saw future kingdoms. He saw one who rose up and again, one who offered up offerings in the temple of the Lord. And I said in that lesson that that, that vision in a manner of speaking, it had already it's already been fulfilled in our day. It was fulfilled by a man named Antiochus Epiphanes. I hope that you remember that name. And again, like I said, he offered up offerings in the temple of God to Jupiter, the, the Roman version of, of Zeus. And so in taking a look at that, that vision of Daniel, I said that even though it, that vision has been fulfilled for us today, there were still future implications in sight of, of that vision. And so there is a desolation that Jesus is speaking about here in this scripture. If we go back to the first verse there in the 13th chapter of Mara's gospel, we'll see that this chapter, it actually opens up with the disciples there showing Jesus the stones and, and the buildings, almost as if the the disciples were marveling at the stones and, and the manner in which the, the buildings were constructed, the architecture of the buildings there. But if you notice there in the second verse, Jesus, he wasn't necessarily marveling, was he? In the second verse there, Jesus, he responded by saying, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone should be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. We'll see Jesus say there, so in a manner of speaking, Jesus, he's speaking about destruction there, right? Again, take a look at that second verse. Jesus said, not one stone should be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then we'll take a look at the fourth and the fifth verse. This statement is what led to a few of the disciples beginning to wonder and, and to begin to ask Jesus a question. We'll see there. They asked him in private, when would these things be? They asked, what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus was talking about the destruction of the temple, if you will, and those buildings and those stones there. They was wondering, well, when is that going to happen? Let us pay close attention to what it is that Jesus shares in the next few verses here. Starting there in the fifth verse, working our way through the eighth verse, Jesus, he said, many would come claiming to be Christ, claiming to be him. Jesus said, he said that there would be wars, that there would be rumors of wars. He said there would be earthquakes. He said that there would be famines, all sorts of, of natural, or if you think about it, unnatural events. And Jesus said that they would occur in, in various places, Jesus said there. And so again, Jesus, he was giving them the signs of, of those times that would come when again, he has said not one turn, not one stone would be left unturned, that, that, that there would be destruction. Jesus, he's pointing ahead to those times. If you ever want to know if someone is, is speaking about the truth, if they are sharing the holy, the righteous and the divine truth with you, just take a look at, at the word of God. Does what they say, does it point to Jesus and, and does Jesus, 
does he point back to them? That may leave some of you wondering, well, how do I know that you are sharing the divine truth, pastor? Well, again, we are in sound doctrine right here, right now. The words that I'm sharing with you, they are not of some new prophecy. And that's where a lot of people get in trouble at. There is no new prophecy. I hope you hear me here today. There is no new prophecy. What, what we, the church, should be sharing and ministering with the world, with all of those that are around us, is the word of God. There is nothing new that we can add to the word of God. The books have been sealed. Jesus did that. He said that at the end of the revelation of Christ. There, there is nothing that, that I can add or bring forth that is this new vision that comes from the Lord. The Lord, through the revelation of Christ, he showed us everything that it is that we need to know. And so here Daniel was, as we have seen the past few weeks now, he was sharing visions, visions of the future, visions that even go far beyond us. How can we know what it was that he was sharing was the truth? Well, here Jesus is in our Sunday school lesson today, pointing back to Daniel, referencing Daniel. That's how we already know that it is true. And then we'll see here that Jesus, he again is speaking about a future time that was future for when he was living and walking in, in the world. And so let's remember a few of the things that Daniel had shared from, from his visions that he had. Let's turn back to the seventh chapter of Daniel. Let's take a look at the 21st verse there. And let's remember how Daniel saw where the quote unquote little horn, that is the man of sin, that is the antichrist Daniel saw, would make war against the saints and prevail against them. Take a look at the 19th verse then the 13th chapter of Mars gospel and take a look at what Jesus said there. Jesus will see there, he confirmed there what it was that Daniel had saw in his vision. Jesus said that in those days, there will be tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the creation which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. So this was Jesus telling the disciples there, he was speaking to the disciples there about, again, what Daniel had seen in his vision. Thus again, confirming that the visions that Daniel had received, that they came from the Lord. Daniel saw the great tribulation and he spoke of the great tribulation. And here Jesus is confirming that Daniel has seen the great tribulation, that there would be days of great tribulation. So again, this is confirmation of Daniel and his vision being the truth, being visions that came from the Lord. Because again, God was there in the flesh in Jesus Christ, again, sharing that, that prophecy of Daniel with his closest disciples there. If we take a look there again, just going back to the 13th chapter of Mars gospel and, and taking a look at scripture there from the 15th through the 17th verse, again, take a look at Jesus describing those days there. Jesus said that in those days, which again, they, those days still haven't occurred. That There have been some that suggest that we are living in the great tribulation. We aren't living in the great tribulation. Jesus, he warned that those on the house top, they shouldn't go down into the house nor enter to take anything out of their house. He warned that those who will see there was in the field, he said that they shouldn't go back to get clothes. Then Jesus gave another great warning there, we'll see, where Jesus said, woe to those who are, who are pregnant, those who are nursing babies in, in those days. Jesus was saying there, those days, the days of the great tribulation, they are going to be some rough days. And, and again, you know, we, there are many that, that love to suggest that we are living in a time of great tribulation. Yes, we, we, we do have some rough times. We do have some rough days. We, we have seen a lot, haven't we? But we aren't living in that period of time. And as I have shared in recent weeks, both in the Sunday school lessons and in the sermons, so again, if you've missed any of that, I would highly suggest that you go through the playlist of the fall quarter Sunday school lessons. Go back and take a look at uh, my series of sermons, Good versus Evil. I spoke about how there has to be a falling away that will take place first before the days of great tribulation begins, that falling away being the removal of the church when Christ comes back and he, he calls out the church. We call that the rapture of the church. That has yet to happen because again, the church, 
those who are of sincere faith, to be very clear about that, we as a congregation of sincere believers, we have not been taken out of the world. Faith is still present in the world today. Again, the Great Tribulation period, as scary as it is, and again, even though we're having some rough days, the future is not always bright, right? We aren't living in that period of time. We have a period of time now to where we should be getting ourselves ready for, for the coming of Christ to rapture out the church. What these days are, however, I will say, they are essentially images of that future to where there is going to be desolation, which again, we see Jesus speaking about here. So Daniel, again, just recalling the visions that we have gone over in recent weeks. In the seventh chapter of Daniel and the 18th verse, as bad as those days, the days of great tribulation will be, if we take a look back at that verse, Daniel, he saw that the saints of the Most High will receive and possess the kingdom that is the kingdom of God forever. Those who, those who become saints during the period of great tribulation, there will be tribulation saints after the church is called out of this world, they will prevail in the end. They may suffer, some may even die during the great tribulation, but again, they will prevail in the end because at the second coming of Christ, we know that the tribulation saints, that they will be there with Christ. And so again, during that time period, faith, one must have it. One must have faith. For us today, even though we aren't living in that period of great tribulation, we have our trials and we have our tribulations today. We have all manner of things that we go through. That's not good. There is great wickedness. There is great evil in our world today. We too, we can prevail. The way that we prevail is not by our own strength, not by our power, not by our own might. That does nothing for us. We overcome the wicked, we overcome the evil by faith. So we must walk by faith, okay? And so Jesus, he tells us there, looking back at the 13th chapter of Mars gospel, I know I'm doing some cross-referencing back and forth, but again, I just want to give confirmation uh, of Daniel's visions again through, through Christ, because again, Daniel was speaking the truth. We'll see there in the 21st verse, working our way down there, Jesus, he tells us not to fall for those that proclaim to be good, to be Christ. He said that false Christ, he said that false prophets, that they will arise and that they will show signs. You better believe that there are many who like to go around today proclaiming that they are some kind of great. Be watchful of them. So again, he said, he warns us there of them, which again, we, we see nowadays, we must again take heed. We must again remain faithful to the divine truth we must not give in to those who like to proclaim that they are a child of God. We must not give in to those who, again, are false teachers, who are false leaders, those who are false prophets, those who like to claim Christ, but don't move in Christ. Again, we must be faithful to the divine truth. And so again, one may again wonder, how can I know if someone is sharing with me the holy and the righteous truth. How can I know if someone is sharing with me the divine truth? Again, I tell you, confirm it by the word of God. And, and, and if you doubt the word of God, if you are unsure about the sound doctrine of God, Peter said it himself over in 2 Peter, the first chapter of 2 Peter in the 16th verse. He said it himself, we, we did not follow cunningly devised fables, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty, the sound doctrine of God, the Holy Scripture. It's an eyewitness report. And again, if you can't believe the eyewitness report, I tell you, 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 you should listen to and you should heed the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus, he said that one who has not received the Holy Spirit, they would be unable to recognize him, they wouldn't be able to recognize the divine truth. You must receive the, the Holy Spirit. Over in the 14th chapter of John's gospel in the 17th verse, you'll see where Jesus has said, those with the Holy Spirit, they're able to recognize him because he lives in them. 
and that he guides them. That's the Holy Spirit guides all believers into the holy and the righteous truth. Daniel, again, he prophesied a word that came from the Lord, visions that came from the Lord. Do you believe it? I believe it because again, the Holy Spirit leads me to believe it. And because Jesus once again points back to it and says that Daniel, that he was indeed sharing the truth. Now, speaking about Daniel's vision there in the seventh chapter of Daniel, if we take a look at the 13th verse, there was some more that we saw in Daniel's vision where Daniel, he saw the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven and that to him, that is the son of man, that is Christ, was given dominion and glory and an eternal kingdom given to him by the ancient of days. I hope that you remember that Sunday school lesson that we had as well. Jesus, once again, he confirms this. If we take a look at the 13th chapter of Mark's gospel, and we take a look at the 24th through the 26th verse there, Jesus said that in those days after the great tribulation, the heavenly bodies, that's the sun, the moon, and the stars, they will no longer give their light. They will be darkened, Jesus said there in that scripture. And then Jesus said, the Son of Man, he himself will come in the clouds with great power and glory. So again, we see where Jesus, again, just confirming, confirming all that we have studied so far uh, in this, this quarter of Sunday school lessons, seeing those visions of Daniel. This is how you know those visions are true because Jesus, he was confirming that they were true. And so there in the 27th verse, just again, go a step further. Jesus, he said that when, that when that day comes, that he will send his angels to gather his elect. And he said that from all over the earth, from the four winds, his angels, they will gather the elect, that is the chosen, and they will come together. They will bring them together, which again, that is the start of the millennial kingdom. So again, Jesus, he confirmed what Daniel what Daniel has saw where the saints of the most high, they will be given into the hands of the wicked and the evil. They will be persecuted. Some may even lose their lives physically, but in the end, the saints of God shall prevail. And again, we know this to be the truth because again, Jesus has confirmed it for us. Jesus has confirmed the truth for us. And so, what falls on us today is whether or not we will choose to believe. And that's something that I've been preaching about the past couple of Sundays now. Some of us, we are skeptics of, of the word of God. And, and trust me, I understand if you are skeptical of the messengers that's in the world today, because yes, there are many false prophets, many false teachers in the world today who, yes, you should be skeptical of, but again, you can break that skepticism by choosing to have faith in the Lord. You don't have to necessarily believe in me, but choose to believe in the scriptures, the, the word of God. Choose to, to believe in the Lord and his works that are certainly present in, in our world today. Establish a relationship with the Lord and receive his Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into all truth. We must discern spiritually in this world today, the good from the wicked, the righteous from the evil. And again, the only way that we can do that is through the receiving of the Holy Spirit. We can know when someone is sharing the holy and the righteous and the divine truth with us. Again, the scripture will confirm it. That is sound doctrine will confirm it. All we have to do is go and take a look at it, research for yourself. I share that all the time. Do some own, your own research, turn to the scripture, surround yourself with wise counsel that knows the word of God, who you can trust, aren't misleading you. And then not only that, if, if what someone shares with you, if it doesn't go back to Christ and if Christ doesn't point to them as well, you already know as well, there is no new prophecy. Just wait, just wait to see if what, if, if there's some kind of new prophecy, wait to see if it comes true. And somebody may say, well, pastor, you're talking about Christ is going to come again. Do I have to wait until that time? Again, I tell you today, don't take my word for it. Turn to the Lord and receive the Holy Spirit. 
have faith in him. And again, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. That is how you can prove what someone is leading you in the holy and the righteous truth or if they are misleading you. That is what I hope that you take away from our Sunday school lesson this week. Again, trust in the word of God, trust in the Lord himself, learn to have faith in him. And again, if you want more from this lesson, because I, I kind of have to shrink these lessons, I kind of compact them for, for the video, there's a full commentary that you can check out in the description below. I highly suggest that you go and take a look at the commentary. Like I said, there are sermons and lessons that I have preached for the past two months now that you can go back and again, you can listen to them, you can read them as well. Again, grow in your knowledge, grow in your wisdom, grow in your understanding. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the New Found Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.